The Olympics now just a week away, and you can catch all the competition right here on today's TMJ4. Yeah, someone who is very familiar with the games from an athlete standpoint is our next guest. She has a silver and two gold medals from three different Olympic Games as a member of the U.S. soccer team. And we are happy to welcome Kate Markgraf back to the yellow couch. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. I love, love this couch. I miss you. it. It's Isn't comfortable, it right? I know. Once a year I get to sit on it. You get to sit on it more often than that. One of the love things it. I didn't know, and I've probably heard this before, but you're ranked 11th in the world. Get this. Male and female, male or female, in appearance for our country, starting 94% of those games, ranked 11th in the whole world. Yeah, it means I'm old. It means yeah. I had a long <laughs> career. Yeah, but your career <laughs> is you're amazing. It. Yeah, Over three it different fun. Olympic games. It was fun, but more importantly, I played with such incredible people, and I got to play with my role models for two of those Olympics. Who yeah. so are people, some of your role like models? Like Mia Hamm, Christine Lilly, you name it. Like Those are the people that yeah. I looked up to. That I had their posters on my wall, but even better, they lived up to it in person. Because there's nothing so more soul-crushing than worshiping someone yes. and finding out they're not really the person not a good person so yeah. they were good that's people awesome. amazing people that's pretty impressive that's really cool you, you know, notice people, how she deflects that oh yeah it's about playing with other people yeah it's not about how great yeah I am. yeah right thanks for calling me out thanks for calling me out appreciate yeah, very that humble. Uh -huh. keep um, it real it's interesting some of the athletes are starting to arrive in pyeongchang mm -hmm. so what do oh, you think nice oh. pronunciation okay, I know. Nailed it. now Whoa. you know nailed it yeah we were practicing yeah so what do you think it's like especially for that first time what does it feel like to arrive i can imagine that that first like the game's opening ceremony Mm -hmm. is amazing but just that first arrival even right well when you first land you're just taken away because you're with all the other athletes yeah so you're with your teammates if you're in a team sport individually you're used to training probably in a group a little bit but then you get to see all the other athletes and the different body shapes will just blow your really? mind like oh, you have yeah. a little like, like rhythmic versus. dancer right yeah. <laughs> to a, a greco-roman wrestler and then <laughs> great the, point yeah and then you just meet all these incredible people in the training rooms and then like there's usually two or three places where there's television so it's just an incredible time of bonding and the one thing you have in common is that you're there to compete for your sport did you cry or did you get pumped up uh, the first Olympics, I was nervous, right? I was mm -hmm. probably shaking the entire time. I think I lost like 15 pounds out of nerves. <laughs> wow. Um, and then the second Olympics, I took it in a little bit more, but I was more focused because we lost yeah. the first one. And yeah. I was like, we're going to get this done this time. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, I had had a child and I wanted to do it as a mom. So I was also trying to embrace the moment. But when I embraced it too much, I forgot about why I was there. And I mm. made a huge mistake in my first game. You did? And what we, was the mistake? Well, you, I basically made the best pass behind our back line and I was on our defense to the other team who went and scored in the first like oh, four minutes of the game. No. Oh, wow. So we ended up uh, losing that game. Yeah. We had to like count, like to win our next mm -hmm. games in order to get out of our bracket. And then I played great after that. But because I was too in the moment, I yeah. forgot about why I was there. You huh. know, one of the things I wonder, especially about going to another country, as so many athletes do, very few play in their own country, depending on when where the games mm -hmm. are. But I wonder about the stress of um, training and practicing when you're in a different time zone sure. and you're different elevation, right. different food, maybe even water mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and do you have do you have a sense of stress about sort of the unknown and being somewhere very far from home? Well, that preparation is the key to success, right? So you already shift your clocks when you're home before you go. So oh, you about do? three weeks ahead of time, you're starting to adjust oh, your own time clock. Three weeks. Yeah, but wow. back when I was doing this, we weren't texting people. But I think mm -hmm. my friends nowadays, had I been in the Olympics, this one would not appreciate my like one in the morning text because <laughs> I'm awake, right? Yeah. And then you um, bring your own food. You basically have an entire luggage you of do. just food. Mm -hmm. like you tuna. personally or right. your team brings it? Um, you bring your own because then oh, wow. the team, the good stuff goes first when it's the collective team. So you yeah. make sure you bring the stuff that you really love. And then, uh, and then you're just ready for it. You hopefully have done enough visualization, have been in other countries before, that you're going to be able to handle it just fine. I'm interested okay. in the fact that you said visualization, uh, visualization because one of the books I'm listening to talks specifically about Olympic athletes and the mindset and the thoughts that you have to have to be able to compete. And you had said something just a minute ago. You said, I was too present to remember why I was there. What, is that, what does that mean? Because that's not something I've really heard verbalized. Yeah, that's fascinating. I it think. means that you forget why you're there. So the biggest key as any athlete is to be able to compartmentalize your emotion, mm. be able to get it in the right zone of arousal. So I'm going to get all technical, but yeah. some people like to read like is it your breathing? Romance novels to calm themselves down to like not think about the pressure while some people need to listen to hard rock music or hardcore rap huh. and like scream and yell in a locker room in order to get up excited enough to focus on the play. Wow. I just wasn't in my right zone because everyone is different. So mm -hmm. it's okay if you want to read the romance novels. And it's okay if you want to listen to 
M and M. But it's whatever works best for you, and knowing that. So it's uh, just having that prepared for when you're really, really nervous. But that comes through self awareness. Yeah. So that comes through practice. Interesting. So cool. I want to mm -hmm. talk about your camp very quickly, but we're running out of time. You're a mom. You have a son who's 11, right? Mm -hmm. And then twins, a boy and a girl who are both eight. Right. Now, um, what about the work-life balance in life? Any thoughts that you have on that as a mom? Well, preparation, like I said, <laughs> from being an athlete, that's that transferable skills. That's the key to success. And I have help. And Google Calendar is how my husband and I communicate. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like we have a weekend marriage, you know, where it's like, hey, like, good to see you, because we're both working. So it's, um, I mean, it's just planning and planning. And sometimes we do it right. And it's like, yes, but the majority of times something yeah. falls through the cracks. But usually it's the one that's okay that it does. Yeah. He played soccer too. Do your kids all play? Yeah, but they do play. I think they just like playing with their teammates, though. I don't yeah. know. I mean, they have to decide how, how good they want to be. We don't know if they have that it yet, but they'll figure what it time, out. What time? Like what, what decide age? how yeah. good they're going to be. What age do you think kids these days need to really be good at something to advance? I think you don't need to be good at one thing. I think you need to do anything you're interested in and be exposed to as much as you can, whether that's mm -hmm. through school, after school activities, what have you. And then around 12 and 13, physiologically, after you go through puberty, that's when you can start to focus a little bit more on maybe your two or three interests. Because yeah. like the mental health aspect and the physical health aspect and all the studies say you should be doing multiple things, but that yeah. doesn't mean sport in a traditional sense. Dance is sport. Yep. You oh, know, yeah. like yoga is sport. Right. So you can be doing other things, weight training. It's all about building those factors in early so you have an appreciation for physical activities. Yeah. Because that will predict your mental health when you get older as well. Huh. I love, I love that. that. Are mm -hmm. you, for the Olympics this year, where are you gonna be, what are you doing? Oh, I'm gonna be cheering from my couch. I'm gonna be cheering okay. for the seven, soldier Olympians that are going to be yeah. the Sedge and Luge. Awesome. I want to see them. Very okay, cool. that's awesome. I love it. You have a camp June 11th through the 15th. We mm -hmm. didn't get a lot of time to talk about it, so you have to come back and talk more about your camp because there's athletics, drama, leadership, music, dance, yoga. I love it. If people go to markgrafsla.com, they can find out more about this wonderful camp for girls. It's about leadership and self-confidence and mm -hmm. empowerment and all that great stuff, um, which is wonderful that you do that for, for young kids in our community. Great to, to see you. Good to see you guys. Good to Thanks see you. Thanks, Kate. Yeah.